Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Reknum Cherry Dreamland for the Nintendo Switch. And yeah, I, I did have to practice a little bit to say that without laughing. But for those of you who are a fan of 1930s and 40s cartoons and have always been wondering why Cuphead hasn't been a somewhat more manageable action platformer, well this little Reknum Cherry has granted your wish. But diving right into the story for Reknum Cherry Dreamland, there's a series of powerful crystals that the sorceress of the land is trying to use for her own means, but uh, as it turns out, evil sorceress, not exactly pure of heart, can't use crystals. And so she's taken it upon herself to capture the pure of heart princess of the kingdom. But before the princess could be taken and imprisoned, she sent out a little fairy in order to identify and awaken the kingdom's only hope, vis-a-vis -vis Cherry. And after a brief top-down introductory level, which honestly was a little bit confusing, we find the hero Cherry and the game switches modes to its primary function of a side-scrolling action platformer. Overall though, as a side-scrolling action platformer, Cherry Dreamland doesn't really bring anything new to the table and does provide everything you would expect. There is, of course, platforming and real-time enemy combat, and you start the game with your sword, though it might take you a little bit of time to get used to its speed and its range. The further you make it into the game, you'll be introduced to new weapons, such as a bow and even a spear. And while, of course, like any good game, you can take on most of it with your initial introductory weapon, each of the three different weapons in Reknum Cherry Dreamland does kind of have its own specific function, if not its own specific use. Your initial starting sword is obviously your close combat and can pretty much only attack right and left. The bow that you encounter after a certain number of levels is fairly omnidirectional, and if you're playing with a D-pad because this is a classic platformer, you kind of like, ah, I might get stuck because you don't realize you're supposed to use the left thumbstick to actually control the directionality of the bow. And this will allow you to break certain blocks both uh, to your left and right as well as above you. But your final spear weapon, uh, I never really figured out a super explicit use for it except stabbing upward, so I'm just going to kind of let that one slide. But back to the platforming, you don't get a double jump right off the bat, but you do get a wall jump and a wall climb. And both of these will be incredibly helpful, if not absolutely necessary, to your progression through Reknum Cherry Dreamland. The level design itself is fairly straightforward, and while sometimes it does change from a horizontal traverse to a vertical climb, the explicit level design is fairly easy to read. And so while the actual enemy combat probably won't slow you down too terribly much, especially after you get your hands on the bow and can start doing some ranged combat, one of the ways the level difficulty is actually increased, and in my own personal opinion as a gamer, somewhat on a more artificial level, is the need to not only collect keys to open end of level gates on occasion, but to toggle certain switches that might have you doing quite a bit of back and forthing from one end of the level to the other before you can actually manage to open the exit gate. And while enemies don't respawn, you will have to navigate backwards and forwards through the exact same series of traps, which can cause a bit of player frustration if you accidentally get knocked off a platform and have to start the entire series over. Now, this isn't always the case for every single level, because checkpoints can be pretty much back-to-back -back in certain levels, and in other ones, pretty few and far between. And so again, that's why I did start getting the sense of almost a bit of an artificial difficulty increase with lack of checkpoints and the need to navigate through the entire series of traps more than two or three times. But again, it is a pretty simple and straightforward game, so once you do get the hang of it, it's not too much of a challenge. Looking at Reknum Cherry Dreamland's presentation though, again, like I said before, if you're a fan of those 30s and 40s era cartoons with bouncing wide-eyed graphics like Betty Boop or Steamboat Mickey, then you're probably going to have a great time just navigating through the game even if you're not paying attention to too much of the enemy combat or platforming. Because these particular graphics, combined with the game's particularly well-done soundtrack, they really do create an amazing experience to the player even if that experience doesn't seem to always jive with the gameplay. And so moving into the second half of the review, there are a few things a player might want to be aware of before diving into Reknum Cherry Dreamland. And first and foremost in which is, uh, for once, not the length of the game. It's actually the fact that Reknum Cherry Dreamland does take part as a single iteration in the entire series of games. Now, I personally haven't played any other games in the series, so I can't really speak to whether you should or need to play them or not, but as far as my own personal experience goes, Reknum Cherry Dreamland does pretty well as a standalone game on the Switch. 
Time is a consideration though, because if you are a veteran platformer or are remotely skilled, then you might be finishing this game in as little as two hours. Though I would forecast a general average gameplay being more close to three. There are only a handful of levels to navigate through, and as I said before, they are pretty simple and straightforward, so once you get a handle on enemies and traps, they don't really take that long to finish. And while that might be take it or leave it for some players, the combat system of the game, it occasionally seems just, just a little bit laggy. And I don't mean that as the game glitches, what I mean is that there seems to be a slight disconnect of hitboxes for weapons ranges, or how and when they make contact. And this is most explicitly recognizable with the bow when the arrow will stick into a breakable block instead of breaking it. And that's probably just that collision detection on items could use a little bit more polish. But possibly as a final note of critique, and, and pretty much this is probably just a me thing, while there are boss fights in the game, it's not really centered around them. And even though there are about seven or eight different levels in the game, there's only about two or three boss fights. And while you might be thinking that there's a boss for every single unlockable weapon, that's not actually the case. You just kind of get them occasionally. And so that combined with the simplicity and straightforwardness of the levels and the simplicity of the combat, well, it kind of tarnishes the player's achievement. And while I can't say that it's my absolute favorite platformer ever, I can say that Regnum Cherry Dreamland is certainly entertaining. And depending on what you're going for and what type of aesthetics you like in a game, then if you can get it for a couple of dollars, it might be totally worth your time. But anyway, that does about bring us to the end of the review of Reckonum Cherry Dreamland now for the Nintendo Switch. So if you enjoyed the review, or especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw us a like or a comment to show your support, and don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. Because there are literally thousands of indie games out there, and new and unique ones are coming out every single day. And since we are one of the only channels that exclusively covers indie game content on the Nintendo Switch, chances are, it, whether it's an easy hard pass or an absolutely unforgettable gem, if it's on the Switch, you're going to find out about it right here. But anyway, this has been The Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching.